This is my Sioux Falls training course module and I want to add a Gapville question. So you can see I've got editing on. If I come to more, scroll down to questions, come to training questions, add a new question, scroll down here and this is the Gapville type. So I'm going to call it Gapville 2, as I know I've already got one there. This is where you put your question text. So this is where you add your paragraph or a few sentences or whatever you want students to fill in the gaps for. These little blue question marks can be really helpful about how to build questions, put delimiters. So I'm going to use a sentence that you all might all know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and I'm going to put delimiters I'm going to use square brackets I know that you can use those and it saves using the shift key so there we are the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog haven't used gap settings before. Distractors are really useful because you can put all sorts of words that can really confuse students. Well, obviously these aren't going to be very confusing. Yellow, uh, what have we got? Jumps over the lazy, jumps over the cat. More options is useful. I'm using these square brackets, but those are the ones you can use. This is important as well. Display answers. Drag and drop means the, the students get to see the answers and they drag and drop them into the gaps. The gap fill means they actually have to type the answers in and that means they have to get them spelt correctly and that they don't include any extra gaps. I use the gap fill for revision purposes where I'm not doing any actual marking and it's not weighted but I would probably use drag and drop or drop down for um, exam purposes. The drop down option is like the drag and drop, except when students come to a gap, as they click in it, they're offered a drop down list of options to go in that gap. I fix the gap size usually because that means students can't guess the words according to their length. I don't know what these are, never played with those. And there are some other things there as well that you can um, explore. Uh, combined feedback, that's just for after the event. Multiple tries, as I've said in previous questions, I reduce that to zero because if I do use these quizzes as revision quizzes, I set them up as interactive with multiple tries, which means students can keep having a go and they can keep trying the same question over and over again. And if you set this to zero, they don't get penalised on there marks which can just make them feel better as it's revision quiz it doesn't really matter save changes so here's my gap fill too if i look at the preview the quick brown the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog okay and i can check it and voila i'm right and that is the Gapville question. It's really useful. I use it um, with first and second year students particularly, and sometimes I can use maybe a small paragraph, which the students hate, but they do tell me that it makes them think, especially when your distractors are very similar to the correct answers. The other thing that you, you can do is if you have several questions that are quite similar, you can just copy the question give it a new name but you can change your sentence here and keep using the same distractors so it can just save a bit of time to do that and that's how you set up a gap fill question